Saints family, friends, and familiar, just a little word for the day to help you along your way. This devotion is coming from Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 through verse 16. It is the parable that Jesus tells about workers in the vineyard. And the parable lets us know that there was a landowner and he goes into the marketplace early in the morning and he uh, negotiates with those who are standing idly in the marketplace. He negotiates for a denarius a day to work in his vineyard. Now, uh, bear in mind that a denarius is a uh, day's pay for a laborer. And so they go in the third hour, they go in the sixth hour, they go in the ninth hour, he comes back in the eleventh hour, and they also go into the vineyard to work. But at the end of the day, he begins to give out the pay for the day. He begins with the last until the first. When he gets to the first, the first have a problem because they have borne the heat of the day, and these other ones came at the end of the day, and they got the same pay. And so the landowner says, did I not negotiate with you for a denarius a day? Uh, why is your eye evil? Because I am good. Take your pay and go your way. He concludes the parable by saying, the first will be last and the last will be first. Many are called, but few are chosen. And so this is a powerful passage that has so many applications. You can come different angles on this passage to provide insight and, uh, and edification and understanding uh, of God uh, as the landowner uh, seeking out those to come and labor in his vineyard. But what I want to compare and contrast uh, with you uh, at this hour is the difference between then and now. Then you would hire anybody. Now, oftentimes, our jobs require a background check. And so I like to use background check uh, for to entitle this message, a background check. A background check is the process of uh, looking up and compiling criminal history records, uh, financial credit history, uh, perhaps uh, job history info on an individual. And oftentimes this is followed up with a drug test. And all of this is part of the hiring process. Various companies need to know whether you are a thief. Uh, various companies need to know whether you're violent. Uh, they need to know whether you have spent time in prison, you know. And all of this in an effort to determine someone's character. They need to know whether you have a propensity to harm their corporate interests. You can't tell by looking at somebody on the outside of what the character, the content of the character of the individual is on the inside. And so oftentimes when a company would receive a negative background check, it would render a potential hire unqualified. But aren't you glad that God does not call the qualified, but he qualifies those that are called. And so God has sent out the gospel call to qualify us. He knows we're tore up from the floor. He knows we're busted and disgusted. He knows we got problems. He knows we have hangups. God understands all of that. In Colossians chapter one and verse number 12, the Bible says, giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Aren't you glad that God does not hold your past against you? All of us have a past. Things that we have done that we're not a proud of. Things that we have done that if others knew, they would look away. They would go away. We would not have associations with people if they knew some of the things that we have done in the past. Paul writes to the saints in uh, Corinth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11, he says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. He says, Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites. All of these attributes of people will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he said, And such were some of you. But here comes the contrast. But you were washed. But you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. And so aren't you glad that God qualifies those that are called? He makes us right. You know, it's not that we come fixed. No, we come broken vessels, but God can make us right by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so every man and woman needs to answer the call of God. The call of God comes in the, in the form of the gospel. And so if you have yet to answer the call of God, then you are in God's eyes, idle in the marketplace. 
idol in the marketplace. The call of God can be found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14, where the Bible reads, but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for, for salvation through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you. How did he do that? By our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are, number one, we are called by the gospel. I'm going to say a few things about that. But the point is that until you answer the call, you are just like these laborers in the marketplace standing idle. And so many people might not identify with that because they think that they're busy in life. They're busy taking the kids to soccer practice. They're busy working two and three jobs. They're busy trying to get a license for a food truck so they can have their own business. They're busy doing this and they're busy doing that. But if you're not about your father's business, if you're not about my heavenly father's business, then in his eyes, you're idle. And too many people are laboring. Yes, you're working and you're laboring, but you're laboring for food that perishes. In John chapter six and verse 27, Jesus says, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. So God has approved Jesus. And so in order to get to the Father, we got to come through the Son. The Son is anointed, the Son is appointed, and the Son will be your Savior if you come to him through the obedience of the gospel as you answer the call of the landowner, which is God the Father. Those who answer that call are called out of the marketplace of this life. And those that want to be called out of the marketplace of this life might want to know a few things. You might want to know what does this job entail. You might want to know what are the benefits. You might want to know what is the pay. I want us to understand that there is a job description for the child of God. The first one is devotion. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 30, 39, Jesus says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. All of this is part of being about your father's business. And so number one, you have to be devoted to God. And number two, there is commitment to being a child of God, being committed to God. Jesus says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things will be added unto you. Then, of course, there's service. In Romans chapter number 12 and verse number one, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And so it's only right to do right by God in light of all that he have done and sacrifice that we might call him our father. And number four, there is uh, loving the unlovable, loving the unlovable. See, being a child of God is a tough job. It's a tough job. It's not a cakewalk. You got to love the unlovable. In Matthew chapter five and verse number 44, Jesus said, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you. And so this job comes with a heavy criteria. We've got to forgive, we got to do good, we got to resist the devil and not assist the devil. We have to help others come to Christ. We call that evangelism, helping others to come on board with the Lord. And of course, there are benefits. David lets us know in Psalm 103 and verse two through four, David says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He says, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And so David is outlining for us how good it is to be a child of God. When you become a child of God and you've been a child of God for a little while, two things come to your mind. Number one, you realize that I could have died in my sin and heaven would have never been my home. You recognize, number two, that God could have come while I was still out there headed to hell in a hurry. And so it's, uh, it's because of this realization that praise is the proper response. David says over there in Psalm 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times for his praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
And it's because I have a new lease on life that I have a reason to rejoice because he's made a way for me. And because of this, it's no, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Because of this, I'm delighted to serve him. Because of this, I'm delighted to worship him. Because of this, he's no longer some secret lover. And I'll tell the world wherever I go that I've got a savior and he's sweet, I know. My past spiritual condition was as a lame man. I was unable to walk. I was needing help from others. I was begging, hoping, and praying for mercy. That was my past condition. And so life is so much better on the other side. The other side of what? Darkness in my sins and trespasses. Now I'm a child of the most high God. And not only that, but there's pay at the end of the day. There's pay at the end of the day. When we cross the border from time to eternity, there's pay at the end of the day. In John 14 and 1, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me and my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. There's pay at the end of this life's journey. And, so, and what we have to do in response to all that God have got, done is hear the word in Romans 10, 17. Believe the message of the cross, uh, Hebrews 11 and 6. Repent of your sin, Luke 13 and 3. Confess Jesus to be Lord, Matthew 10, 32. And be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, Acts 2 and 38. And Acts 2, 47, the Bible says, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, those that were being saved. Visit the Church of Christ in Goose Creek. We're at 539 Old Monks Corner Road. We'd be delighted to worship with you at 930 every Sunday. Midweek Bible studies on Wednesday at 7. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you.